Good afternoon everyone. So I would like to welcome you all to a live session from Let's Update Language Academy for OET reading module. Let's just wait for a few minutes, a few more people to join in. Yes, so good afternoon everyone. We shall be starting the session in a few minutes from now. Yes, I can see uh, Anjana saying good afternoon ma'am, good afternoon. Anjana, hello Amitraj, yes, so we will be beginning the session for OET reading module in a few minutes. Okay, so uh, now it's almost time. Okay, so uh, now let me introduce myself. I am Pooja Vijay Kumar and I am here to give you an insight about uh, OET reading module part B. Okay, so now uh, about uh, OET reading module, what I have to say is there is no one particular uh, way to approach the reading module uh, in OET. 
there are a lot of approaches that different people might choose to crack it. So I'm just going to share a strategy which might be useful for you to crack part B of OET reading module uh, going forward. Okay. So uh, before that, I'll just uh, give you a small insight about the structure of OET uh, reading module. So the reading subtest um, consists of uh, three parts, part A, B and C. Okay. And um, so it will carry a total of 42 questions. Okay. And uh, part A will be consisting of 20 questions, part B with 6 questions and part C with 16 questions. Okay. And the total time will be 60 minutes to crack OET reading module and part A consisting of 15 minutes and part B and C together comprising of 45 minutes. Okay, so uh, you need to divide your time accordingly and uh, solve the whole test in a matter of 60 minutes. Okay, so now about OET reading module. Okay, and uh, part B is what we are going to discuss today. Okay, so how to approach part B. So uh, the part B, talking about part B, what uh, I want to tell you, it, it basically assesses okay, or evaluates your ability to identify the purpose or main idea from a short test. That too, very quickly. Okay, you don't have a lot of time. Okay, so um, you need to actually um, identify the purpose. Usually they ask for the purpose or the main idea hmm, of a, um, a from a short text hmm, uh, very quickly. Okay, so that is what we are supposed to be doing from OET reading module part B. Okay, so I can see a, a yes, a lot of people joining in. Uh, yes, hi Chintu, uh, hi Priya, hi Shaheen, hi Priyanka. Hello and so uh, I can see a lot of uh, you joining in. So now I shall continue with uh, what I was saying. So text, uh, yeah, so part B and uh, what I need to tell you is the type of text that you can expect in part B will be usually consisting of emails, memos, guidelines, policy documents, circulars, notifications, announcements, manuals, or internal communication within an organization or healthcare related field. Okay, so these are um, the type of text that you can usually expect from part B of OET reading module. Okay, right. So now moving forward, uh, part B will be consisting of six short text and six questions and all the six questions will be three option multiple choice questions okay so now okay so um, now the points or the strategy or the approach that I need to tell you to crack uh, part B of OET reading module is that first what you need to do first you can you should read the heading to understand what the text is about Hmm? That is very important. You need to read the heading to understand what the text is about. And then the second uh, thing that you need to do is you need to read the question to know what information you need to find. Okay, So that is very important. And the third step you need to do is now read the content of the text. Hmm? And when you read the content of the text, what is your aim? That is to find the answer to the question that you have read. Okay, so that is what you need to do. Okay, so, um, so first you need to read the heading, then read the question and then read the text so that you can find the information for the question. Okay, and uh, find the answer uh, to the question. Okay, now what you need to do? read the answer options and then decide which should be your answer. You can either 
choose uh, directly if it is directly uh, mentioned that is uh, the answer is directly mentioned in the text you can uh, select it directly or else if it is not exactly mentioned that means you need to um, gather information and understand the meaning and come to the answer or to the conclusion then what you can do is the elimination method hmm? and the elimination method what needs to be done you should be able to find evidence to prove why the other options are incorrect okay and once you do that you can eliminate all the options and then come to the rest of the option you can eliminate all the rest of the options and come to the one correct answer okay so that is one strategy which i am putting forward okay so you are free to use or adopt that strategy okay so now what we can do is we can actually uh, discuss a reading material of uh, part d section Okay, so I hope this is visible to you. Okay, so now this is a part B uh, reading material. And uh, so first, let's go through the heading as I told you. So let's read the heading first. What is the heading? Policy statement, management of elective surgery booking list. Okay, that is a heading. So, go through the heading first. Okay, because we need to know what this uh, text is about. Okay, that is very important. Hmm? So, now what we need to do is now read the question. Following the text and the question is what is the key benefit of BLIS? That is the question. Right. So, now what you need to do is read the text to find the answer to this question okay so try reading the text okay so there is booking list hospitals are part of a national information system that collects indicator data on waiting times for elective surgery administrative guidelines uh, must be used for administration and submission of data from the automated booking list systems at booking list hospitals BLIS provides an indicator of demand for surgical services across the system by specialty and procedure and can be used to review caseload. It enables SA Health to provide information to booking list hospitals about their comparative situation within the state and to plan across the system. Some procedures are excluded from the calculation of booking list statistics. Hospitals should exclude records with procedure indicators of 181 and non-surgical treatment. Okay, so there are a few information given in brackets also. Okay, just go through that also. So now, coming back to the question, what is a key benefit of BLIS? That is our question. Okay, so what should probably be the answer? What do you think? Please put in your answers, okay, uh, on uh, like uh, in the comment box, okay, in Facebook. So, please put in your answers so that I can see what you think of his answer. Okay, so what do you think the answer is? Okay, go through the options A, B and C. What is option A? SA Health gets an overview so that they can see which hospitals have capacity to perform dental extractions. And what is option B? Patients can see which hospitals are able to provide surgical services to them. Patients can see. Okay, so that is the op B option and C. SA Health gets an overview so that they can see which hospitals have capacity to admit patients for particular operations. Okay, I think uh, I'll just uh, reduce the size so that you can re uh, see the entire text at one go. Okay. 
how you can Now I hope you can see the entire text plus the questions plus the options, right? Yeah. So yes, I can see some answers here. Yes, I can see Selena Rashid giving an answer C, option C as answer. Jobina Raji giving answer as option A. Okay, so yes, please put in your answers in the comment box. Yes, again, I can see Princey Alex commenting C, option C. Okay. okay, again I can see a lot of answers here. Um, Shaheen giving answer C. Asha uh, is also uh, choosing answer C. Khalil Ibrahim has chosen answer C. Anishka giving answer as C, option C. So, I think most of you are uh, choosing answer as the option C, right? Okay. So, indeed, C is the correct answer. So, now, let's see why we have come to option C as the answer. Okay. So, let's see. Um, what is the question? What is the key benefit of BLIS, right? So, um, just uh, look at option A. You can use the elimination method, go through like uh, each option and uh, try to eliminate it based on its incorrectness. Okay. And then you can come to the correct answer. So first, if you go to option A, what is it saying? SA Health gets an overview so that they can see which hospitals have capacity to perform dental extractions. See, dental extractions is something that they have excluded, right? See, look at the last paragraph. Hospitals should exclude records uh, procedure indicators of 181 and uh, 999 that is dental or obstetric surgery, right? So, they have excluded that, okay? So, we cannot take that option, right? So, that is an incorrect answer. And what about option B? Patients can see which hospitals are able to provide surgical services to them. It's not the patients, it's not for the patients to see this information, right? So, BLS provides this information and this is enabling SA Health, okay, to view and provide more information about that, okay. It's not for the patients, okay. So, we have to eliminate option B also because that is incorrect as well. Coming to the only option left which is option C, SA Health gets an overview so they can see which hospitals have capacity to admit patients for particular operation, right. So, we get that information from this line. I'll just I highlight the information. So this be the answer which will help us to um, choose option C. Right. So now we move to the next question. 
text 2 okay so this is the text 2 and uh, first read the heading that is heart scares a sign of things to come expert fears okay so that is the heading okay so now what we need to do we need to go through the question what discovery consistently astounds professor Simsarian. okay so what discovery astounded like professor Simsari. so that is the question so now we need to find the answer by going or reading through the text right okay so we'll read the text now okay so one of australia's leading cardiologist fears that heart complaints in athletes will become more common as the demands of professional uh, sport grow I fear that with higher levels of sporting excellence that this may come at a cost that cost being more athletes presenting with heart conditions said Chris Simsari the head of the molecular cardiology program at the Centenary Institute professor Simsarian said athletes were at higher risk of developing heart conditions because of their occupation they are putting their heart under great strain during sports that puts pressure on the heart he said but he said heart problems were also more likely to be diagnosed among athletes than among the general public due to the advanced screening procedures used in professional sport he said the competitive nature of athletes meant persuading them to prioritize their health over sporting ambition was challenging i am forever amazed at the way athletes will never give up he said you tell them what they have um, you tell them that they have a major heart condition that could kill them and they say what do I need to take so I can get back on the field okay so that is our uh, text and now coming back to our question what discovery consistently astounds professor Sincerian and our options are option A is athletes still want to exceed at their game even if it has a negative effect on their health option b athletes will access to at athletes have access to incredibly sophisticated diagnostic assessment tools as professional sportsmen option c athletes are increasingly at risk of developing serious illness despite being super fit so what do you think the answer is? Please put in your answers in the comment box. Okay, so what do you think the answer is? So what was the approach? So first we read the heading. Okay, then we read the question to know what we need to find. Okay, so and then we read the text to find the answer to the question we have just read uh, earlier. And uh, now we are looking at the options. Okay, to see what we can eliminate or if you have a direct answer you can choose that also okay i can see atulia giving answer option a asha choosing answer a Helil ibrahim choosing answer a Yes, Shaheen Begum giving or choosing answer A. Dishamul event choosing answer A. Yes, a lot of you have chosen uh, option A, right? Okay, now we are choosing option A. okay so i think uh, like most of you have chosen answer a and indeed the answer is option a okay that is athletes still want to exceed at their game even if it has a negative effect on their health okay and why is it answer option a it's because what have they told in the final paragraphs that is I am forever amazed. See, what is the question? Question is, 
uh, what discovery consistently astound astounds professor Sumsarian. and what do you mean by astound astound means to surprise someone or to shock someone with something that is unexpected that is the meaning of the word astound okay to shock or surprise someone with something that is unexpected right so can you find out a similar word um, as astound from the paragraph a word similar to astound from the paragraph can you find something like that from these two paragraphs can you see or, or can you find a word that has a similar meaning as the word astound okay that will take you to the answer can you spot something like that okay so astound means i told you it's surprise or a shock with something that is unexpected okay so there is a word similar to yes exactly shaheen begum it is amazed very good okay so amazed is the word that has the same or similar meaning as the word astound okay yes so um, just look at that sentence okay i am forever amazed at the way athletes will never give up okay and what is the reason like or uh, they are uh, telling uh, something that is going to prove you uh, the same thing that is you tell them that they have a major heart condition that could kill them and they say what do i need to take so i can get back on the field what does that mean that the athletes are not are not very um, what do you say um, bothered about their physical condition or their health condition but what are they more bothered about getting back on the okay that is what bothers them okay so even if you tell them they have a very uh, poor health condition or a major heart condition okay or a major illness what is their response what do i need to take that means what medicines should i take or what therapy should i take so that i can get back on the field it means they are not bothered about their health okay so that is what is mentioned there right so, so these are the important parts of the text that will take you to this answer which is option option a is our answer okay let's take they still want to exceed their gi even if it has a negative effect on their health okay so now Moving forward to question number three or the text number three. Okay, so this is our text. Let's read it. So first, um, yeah. Okay, so this is supposed to be the uh, heading. Uh, programs and initiatives to address musculoskeletal disorders. And um, now just we'll just go through the question also which of these initiatives is most um, initiatives mostly involves in in-depth study of one or more musculoskeletal disorder okay so the question is which of these initiative mostly involves the in-depth study of one or more musculoskeletal disorders okay Okay, so identify the keyword, what you need to find, what you do, do you need to find here? Okay, the question is about, mus like, uh, what are the, okay, you have to uh, identify the initiative, which involves the in-depth study, about what, or which includes musculoskeletal disorder okay so that is our aim okay so that is what we have to look for in our text let's just go through the text okay okay so this is our text and um, yeah so let's go through it programs that support management and treatment of musculoskeletal conditions include the Medicare benefit schedule which provides subsidies for patient care and includes Medicare items for the planning and management of chronic and terminal conditions. Eligible patients can also be referred by a GP for up to five 
Medicare subsidized allied health services that are directly related to the treatment of their chronic condition including musculoskeletal conditions. The pharmaceutical benefit scheme continues to provide subsidies for medicines used in the treatment uh, of musculoskeletal conditions and pain management. The Na National Health and Medical uh, Research Council uh, re receives significant investments for research into arthritic and rheumatoid conditions, improving the care of patients with multiple and complex chronic diseases including musculoskeletal conditions has also been identified by NHMRC as a major focus in its 2013-15 strategic plan. Arthritis Australia get fund funding to improve consumer awareness and to build and implement a local exercise program on a national level. So that is our text. Okay, a little more uh, is left that is Osteoporosis Australia receives funding to maintain and update resource materials, improve osteoporosis management in primary care and deliver an exercise program focusing on building bone strength and density. So we have read the text, right? So now what we need to find is the answer to the question. So they are asking about an in-depth, we have to identify an in-depth study, okay, that includes musculoskeletal disorders, okay. So let's check the text. Okay, so the first part, does it contain, it's, it's about Medicare benefit schedule they are talking about and that is including the musculoskeletal condition, right? Okay, that is a, a Medicare benefits schedule, right? And um, that is uh, giving um, subsidies and other health, like uh, for the health services, okay, which also includes musculoskeletal condition. Okay. Then the second para deals with pharmaceutical benefit scheme. Okay, so that is also a scheme, okay, that is uh, not a study that they are or in-depth study or research that uh, they have asked for. And then um, the third para deals with the National Health and Medical Research Council. Okay, so that's a research council and what are they doing? They are doing a research, okay. Research means in-depth study, same thing, right, yes. So, yes, and they are dealing with musculoskeletal conditions, okay, so they are into this, okay, they are researching or they are doing a research on this or they are doing an in-depth study on musculoskeletal conditions, so that is there and now the last, next para is about arthritis Australia, that is about, uh, they are about uh, getting funding, etc. And, um, and then one more para is left, that is about osteoporosis Australia, they are also receiving funding. And um, yeah, no mention about musculoskeletal conditions in the last para here. Hmm? So I hope you have identified the answer by now. So what do you think is the answer? Please put in your options in the comment box. Okay, I can see a lot of people joining in. So, please put in your answers too. I hope you can see it fully.
okay so what do you think the answer is okay yes i can see sachu karnan uh, commenting c uh, as the answer c option is nhmrc and uh, commenting i can see shaheen also commenting c answer in third para uh, she guesses that um, yes sitara ajit commenting c yes amal commenting c anupama srinivas commenting option c sharin satish uh, commenting option c Shija Shibin commenting C, Princey Alex also saying C, Bindu Kurian has commented C, yes, and Naveen has commented C, Asha Sam has commented C, Libya Babu has commented C, okay, see a lot of you have commented C, right, Atulia has commented C, yes, okay, so yes, indeed, the answer is option C, NHMRC. Because where do you think the answer is? See here, the National Health and Medical Research Council receives significant investment for research. So they are doing the research, okay? And about a lot of like uh, regarding a lot of conditions, okay? Uh, that is into arthritic rheum uh, and rheumatoid uh, conditions and also including musculoskeletal conditions. So they are the ones who are doing the research, right? Okay. Okay, so uh, now, now I shall. Highlight that information. Okay, hope it's visible to you now. Okay, yes. So that is why our answer is NHMRC, that is the National Health and Medical Research Council. Okay, because they are doing the research. That is the same meaning as in-depth study and uh, into musculoskeletal conditions, right? Now, moving to question number or the text number 4 and what is the category or what is the um, heading that is drug categories of concern in the elderly. Okay, so that is our heading. So, you have to um, read the heading first to understand what the text is about. Okay, now go through the question to know what you need to find. The question is, which of the following serum digoxin levels can be uh, beneficial in elderly patients? Okay. And they have given three options. Okay. So, now we will just go through the text. Okay. What is the text? Okay. So, uh, just go through the text. Okay. So, it is um, yeah, it's a cardiac glycoside is used to increase the force of myocardial contractions and to treat su uh, supraventricular um, arrhythmias and uh, however it must be used with caution in elderly patients and men with heart failure and a left ventricular uh, ejection fraction of 45 percent serum goes in levels greater than 0.8 um, it's uh, i think it's ancient for uh, ml okay okay it sh there should be an n here okay ng um 
for ML and are associated with increased mortality risk. Adverse effects are typically related to its narrow therapeutic index. One study found uh, Gosin to be beneficial in women when serum levels are 0.5 to 0.9 but possibly harmful when levels were 1.2 and number of factors increase the likelihood of uh, Gosin or toxicity in the elderly. Renal impairment, temporary dehydration and NSAID use can reduce renal clearance uh, and also furthermore uh, the clearance decreases an average of 50 percent elderly patients with normal serum uh, uh, and um, also if lean body mass is reduced as as may occur with aging volume of distribution is also reduced and therefore starting doses should be low at 0.125 mg per day and adjusted according to response and serum um, levels and normal range is 0.8 to Two, okay, and however, uh, it does not uh, always correlate with likelihood of toxicity. Okay, I'm reading at a very fast pace because um, this is the pace at which you are supposed to read. Also, okay, you can't actually afford to uh, read leisurely or uh, like uh, take a long time to read. Okay, you have to just read it very quickly, very rapidly. We can't afford to uh, lose much time there. Okay, so we are actually reading this text to find the answer to the question that they are asking okay so the question is what is the question which of the following serum uh decoxin levels can be beneficial in elderly patients okay, so what do you think the answer is from option a b and c okay they have mentioned normal range where the question is about elderly patients hmm? so there are certain um, information that, that they have mentioned keeping in mind that information you have to choose the level Yes, so what do you think the answer is? Okay, I can see uh, Mira commenting as option A, Naveen commenting as option A, Libya uh, commenting as option A, Asha commenting as option B, Libya is commenting as option A and it's from the last para. Okay, they have identified the answer as well. Yes, please put in your answers in the comment box so that I can see your uh, opinions and uh, answers. Okay, normal range is mentioned, but what is the question? They are asking about the levels in elderly patients. Hmm? So it's not directly mentioned. You have to come to the answers, keeping in come to the answer, keeping in mind the information that they have given. That because um, there are certain uh, kind of information that we need to note. That is, they have told, uh, they have mentioned that uh, beyond a certain level, it is associated with increased mortality risk for elderly patients. So please keep in mind that information too, and then choose the answer. Beyond a certain level, there is an increased mortality risk for whom? For the elderly patient. It is mentioned here. So, keeping in that information also, please come to uh, a conclusion or choose an answer. Okay, so let me tell you the answer. The answer is option B, which is 0.5 to 0.9 mg per ml okay the reason being that normal range is mentioned here but for that that is 0.8 to 2 okay but the problem is here they have specifically mentioned that if for the elderly patients and uh, the problem is you have to use it with caution and if the serum um, levels is greater than 
0.8 is increased with increased mode. So can you choose something beyond 0 0.8? Hmm? 0 0.8 to 2, you are not supposed to choose for elderly patients. See, that is just a normal range for normal people. Okay. So keeping in mind, mind this information, you have to adjust or you have to choose your levels accordingly. Okay. So your answer will be B which is 0.5 to 0.9. Okay, yes, so that 0.9, so it won't go like a lot more than 0.8, okay, just uh, just uh, a 0.1 increase, okay, that's okay, but not a lot beyond 0.8, which will, uh, of course, lead to an increased mortality risk for elderly patients, okay, it is mentioned here. Okay, so mentioned in this part of the text and now coming back okay, coming to text 5 so the text is about tuberculosis control and um, the question is so that is the heading and let's come to the question what key directives are included in this memo okay okay so these are the three options and uh, let's quickly go through the memo what is the memo about hospital and health services included in the scope of this directive shall achieve the following outcomes and what are the outcome all cases of suspected and confirmed tb are managed in cooperation with an established tb control unit implementation of state wide standardized diagnosis treatment and ongoing management protocols to minimize the risk of drug resistance treatment failure or relapse following endo state and national guidelines for preventing the transmission of tb in healthcare and community settings and to prevent tb in at risk children through um, BC vaccination notify the Department of Health of all cases of TB in accordance with the legislative obligations of the Public Health Act 2005. Inform the Department of Health within one business day of TB cases that pose an increase to public risk, uh, health risk where there is a potential for involvement or implication of another jurisdiction, country or other governmental department or non-governmental organization and where there is potential for heightened community interest in accordance with the protocol for the control of TB. So that is our text. Okay, so I've quickly uh, read that. So now uh, coming to the options, what key directives are included in this mem memo? So what do you think the answer is? Covering the points we have just read. Okay, so you have to choose an option that would be covering the points or the information we have mentioned in the memo. So what do you think the answer is? Please put in the comment box. The first option is the need to know the protocol for the control of uh, TB, notify the Department of Health of all cases of TB, administer the BC to anyone suspecting of having TB. Second option, the need to Im implement the statewide immunization program, admit all cases of TB to a specialized TB unit, meet the public health 2005 requirements. Third option is the need to follow consistent practices relating to identifying, treating and preventing TB. Adhere to immunization program following reporting protocols. So what do you think the answer is? Okay, Libby has commented as option A. Please comment your answers. This is A, B and C. Okay, Bindu Korean has commented option C. Okay, so Naveen has commented uh, option C. Okay, so indeed um, the answer is option C. Okay, the need to follow consistent practices relating to identifying, treating and preventing TB adhere uh, to immunization program following reporting protocols. Okay, so that is the answer. Why? Because what have they mentioned relating to identifying? Identifying means diagnosis. Look at uh, this para here. Okay, implementation statewide and this. Diagnosis is the same as identifying. Then treatment, it's mentioned. Same as option C. And preventing, 
okay preventing and or that means uh, ongoing management protocols yeah so minimize the risk okay that is same as uh, similar meaning as preventing and then adhere to immunization program following reporting protocols okay so that means they have to follow the reporting protocols that is specifically mentioned uh, here yeah so here for preventing prevention is mentioned here and uh, also reporting or all cases that is not notify the department of uh, health of all cases so it comes in these sections of the text okay from implementation uh, onwards okay all those information is mentioned same as option c okay so now moving to the last text which is text c text 6 and the heading is please read the heading which is advanced health directives patient guidance okay so that is uh, the heading now go through the question question is what advice should a healthcare professional give adolescents about writing an ahd so now let's go through the text an advanced health directive ahd is a legal written document containing your decisions about your future health treatment anyone over 18 can prepare an ahd even healthy people prepare ahds if you lose your mental capacity you are not legally allowed to prepare an ahd and nobody else can do it for you in wa the law allows you to write an ahd to say what treatments you want or don't want in specific circumstances or you can appoint someone to make medical treatment personal or lifestyle uh, dece uh, decisions on your behalf when you are unable to make or communicate your decision you can make an ahd in which you either provide consent or refuse consent to future treatments an ahd can only be completed while you have the ability or mental capacity to make and communicate decisions as soon as you lose the capacity to make uh, and communicate decisions you are no longer able to complete or modify an ahd no one else can complete an ahd for you once you have lost capacity okay so now what is the question what advice should a healthcare professional give adolescents about writing an ahd so please comment your answer is it option a b or c what do you think the answer is option a is an ahd has to be approved by both parents if the person is under 18 b is an ahd cannot be accepted unless a person is aged 18 or over and option c is an ahd can only be put in place by people aged under 18. Okay, please put in your answers in the comment box. Okay, so what do you think the answer is? Okay, let's just try eliminating the options. Um, look at C. An AHD can only be put in place by people aged under 18. Is it so? What have they mentioned in the whole paragraph or the whole text? They have specifically mentioned that a person should be above 18 years of age to do this, right? So we can easily eliminate option C. Okay. So um, C is completely incorrect. Moving to option A. An HD has to be approved by both parents if the person is under 18. Have they mentioned a scenario or a situation where a person is under 18? No, they have not mentioned a situation. Okay. And they have not mentioned a situation and also they have not uh, mentioned anything such as their parents or guardian should um, approve it on the behalf of the um, person if the person is under 18. So that completely that information is not mentioned. So you cannot uh, choose an answer which is not at all mentioned, right? What, what have they mentioned in the entire text that a person should be above 18 years of age and if the person is incapable of making a decision or um, giving a consent or rejecting a consent, then no one can do it okay so what is the last line no one else can complete an ahd for you once you have lost capacity or if you are not capable to do it. so then 
um, no one else can do it for you right so what the option will be yes I can see a lot of answers here Sachu commenting Sachu Karnan commenting option B Naveen commenting option B Asha Sam has also commented option B as the answer Princey Alex uh, has also commented B as the answer exactly B is the answer and AHD cannot be accepted unless a per person is aged 18 or over that is what they have specifically mentioned throughout the passage right from the beginning they have mentioned that till and in the end also they have mentioned that where have they mentioned that see anyone over 18 can prepare the HD okay and if you lose your mental capacity you are not legally allowed to prepare an HD nobody else can do it for you right so there is our answer okay so we have completed uh, all the six text in part b okay so uh, now it's time to wind up and i hope you have understood what we have discussed today so and i hope you have got an idea about how to crack part b of oet reading so uh, thank you for joining us and see you next week and take care Thank mm -hmm. you.